Well, hello everyone. And, oh, wow, I started it off terrible. Hello everyone, good evening. And welcome to another episode of New Releases. I am joined today by the wonderful Welsh soprano, Ellen Williams. Hi, Well, I can't speak. Hi, Ellen. Oh my goodness, hi. <laughs> hi, Natasha. Oh, so good, don't worry. We've just been chatting for five minutes before we go live, haven't we? And that was fine. <laughs> Well, we'll catch the speech along the way someplace, but how are you doing? I know your schedule has been crazy with the new album coming out. So how are you feeling? I'm really good. Thank you. Doing really well. I'm excited to have the album out there. As, as everyone knows, I've been working on this album for over a year now with um, a couple of tracks coming out last St. David's Day. Um, we had Cal and Lan and Land of My Father's for St. David's Day last year. So to bring out the full album a year later um, is really exciting. And I'm just so pleased it's out there. And the reaction seems really positive. I've got the CDs ready to go now. So um yeah, I'm I'm glad it's there. It, it's nice when you can finally put it out into the world, right? Um, let's share your your cover right here. Let's see if I can put it up. There so it is. is. This is a very clever platform. You can easily move things around. <laughs> We're figuring it out. Yeah, I think they've got some nice features here. Um, Ellen, tell us what was the inspiration for Inspire? Because like you said, it's obviously you've been thinking about it for a while. So what made you want to do? this record? Yeah, well, this is a collection of songs. I feel that so many artists, especially in the classical crossover genre, or classical artists have their own renditions of. And, you know, it's probably not the album for me that's going to be like a breakthrough album because it's not really something new as a mm -hmm. concept. They're brand new arrangements and they're done in a new way and I absolutely love them. But I think for me, it's special to have my own renditions of these out there um, alongside, you know, those renditions that we all know by the big crossover stars like Sarah Brightman, Josh Groban, Catherine Jenkins, um, you know, Andre Rue has them, Il Devo, they all have these versions out there. And I felt it was important for mine to be up there too. And um, I felt I had something new to share as well in the renditions I'm doing. And incorporating things like Canon Lan on there as well, which is a beautiful Welsh hymn. And it's very special to hear that hymn, you know, doing so well across the world that people love it. And um, Dros Gumbling Glad Finlandia is another one. It was written by Sibelius, of course, um, the tune, but uh, a Welsh politician, Lewis Valentine, wrote beautiful words. Um, so, yeah, I think I've can't quite remember what you asked there. <laughs> <Did I answer? laughs> the concept. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think, though, like, we don't think about it as much, but it used to be like with jazz standards and that thing, everyone really had to, to do their version of autumn leaves or, you know, whatever it was. It was like the catalog. Everyone did take a, a shot at. Yeah. And I think I actually think people like to listen to new renditions of songs that they know as well. So, um, you know, in concerts, some of the ones for me that go down best are O Mio Papi No Caro. And I know I need mm -hmm. to do it version of this I, I have been working on it it's ready to come out there but I'm always asked for that in concerts and Amazing Grace which people know so well um do you know that Celtic woman version is so popular and yeah I get asked for that a lot um You'll Never Walk Alone has been another one that I'm always asked for so people love to hear the songs that they know and love and if they're hearing it by an, a new singer or in a new way then I think people are very open to that there's this saying, I feel like it was by David Jones, but I, I quote it all the time. It says, there's always room for beautiful music done well. I think oh. even if you've heard a song many times, you can always appreciate it. And this album is absolutely gorgeous. I listened to it yesterday. It's so beautiful, Ellen. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, I've got some more questions, but before we go to those, I'm just going to do a couple of live shout, out, shout outs to people watching. So we have David Abbott, um, Santo is watching. Holger's watching, Sam from Nashville, Tennessee. Um, we have someone from the Ukraine. Hi, Anna. Um, thank you for joining us. Jenny is watching. Um, Bruce, uh, Patrick, so many. So I'm not going to be able to do everyone, but wanted to give a couple oh, shout outs no. there. I'm so glad everyone could make it. <laughs> So we'll come back. Guys, if you have questions, go ahead and put them in the chat and we'll get to those in a bit. Um, my next question for you is about like who you had involved in this album. So who are you, some of your collaborators that were doing the arrangements with you? 
Well, I worked again with the same team on um, this album as I did with Cinema and A Christmas Wish. Um, this fantastic producer, Chris Craker, and I couldn't do any of this without him. He's been such a huge support and, you know, he's working with people like Hans Zimmer. So I'm so, so grateful to be working with him um, and, you know, kind of being mentored by him as well and, and advised on the industry. It's just been incredible and then um, I'm working with a fantastic Welsh pianist actually called Dan Lambert and he he is the one scoring these beautiful arrangements and, and making the orchestrations and everything and he's hugely talented I think he you know on in his own right he's doing amazingly on the Apple playlists in um, piano music and you should go and listen to his his songs as well I think there he's got some wonderful sleep kind of music there for, for pianists um so he's fantastic and uh yes and then everyone day to day who support me as well my my partners lived this album with me so is my mother you know <laughs> <laughs> for, for every every doubt or worry or question saying oh what about this song should I should this be on there and even when it came to deciding on the order of the CD we me and my mum actually sat and I had a conversation with her first and wanted to have her input because she's a she's a musician as well um on the order and how how they would work best and it's actually funny with the album title. Um, for the majority of the past year, I wanted to call the album World in Union, um, which was going to be the lead single on the album. Um, and then it was just in the middle of a conversation um, with my mother, actually, that um, we were talking about these songs as a collection and how they're inspirational and all these sort of words. And she said, have you thought about calling the album Inspiration? And I said, inspiration. That's a bit long, isn't it? It's a bit long. <laughs> it's that catchy. You know, I went with cinema and that sort of thing that people could just remember. They're really easy names. And then and then we kind of said at the same time, oh, well, I inspire. And then I thought that was perfect because this whole time I've been saying there's songs to inspire hope and faith. And that word has been there in, in every interview I've done over the past year talking about the album. So um, it was sort of a last minute decision to retitle it, but I'm, I'm so pleased with it and it just suits it so well. I love that you really thought about the order of songs because that was going to be something I asked you. I feel like sometimes it's just like it happens. It's a happy accident, but you've obviously given a thought about how you wanted to, to progress on the track. Oh, listing. yeah. And there's been, it, there's been changes so many times. Um, and when you maybe you have an idea of what you'd like the order to be and then you get the masters through and they actually feel a little bit different once the final track you you hear um yeah the album has to be it has to have feeling all the way through and it has to have mm. excited moments that then maybe get topped by an even bigger track and then to contrast that you want to go with something really pure and simple and magical and and if the track ends with a feeling of kind of, oh, that was nice, then you want to keep that, oh, that's nice feeling going for a little bit longer. That's how I sort of look at it. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Let's take a look here. We have a question from Sam and he says, how do you get involved in singing? And when did you realize you had a beautiful voice? Oh, well, thank you very much, Sam. <laughs> um, Gosh, I've been singing really for as long as I can remember. I was a very shy child, actually, but I would always sing. And I was that child who kind of, you know, sang for relatives and said, listen to this song sort of thing. So my grandmother insisted that I had singing lessons um, when I was little. And I learned kind of the Welsh hymns and arias, the songs of Wales and the folk songs. And um, always competed in a Eisteddfodau, which are big cultural competitions we have in Wales for for music, poetry, drama and every year they set a different classical piece or a different folk song that you have to learn so as a child I went to my first singing teacher and I always learnt those songs and um, competed every year made some great friends competing as a child as well and I had started to have some success there um, so yeah that I had sort of success in the Eisteddfod from the ages of maybe, I want to say 16 to the, the big the big successes came at 16 and then um, kind of encouraged me to, to pursue a career in singing, really. It gave me the confidence to go and do that. 
we have another question here. Oops, let's see if we can get it back. Um, Robo Writer 7 says, does Ellen have a favorite track on the album? Mine is Be Thou My Vision. It's always been my favorite hymn. Oh, I think I know who this is on Twitter because I think it's Rob who said to me before maybe that that this is their favourite hymn and um, they were hoping I was going to release it on the album because I recorded a little snippet of me singing this in the garden last summer so this has been a long time working on this song as well. I do really love um, Be Thou My Vision and I, it just felt like the perfect opener to the album because it's really magical and it's kind of full of hope and inspiration in that in that tune and the arrangement by Dan of course um a favorite song I I really love Home Sweet Home I think it's beautiful um it's a beautiful English song um, by Bishop and Henry Rolly Bishop and so many classical artists have have their versions of this out there I think I heard beautiful ones by Sebrin Tervel um Dame Joan Sutherland I listened to on Spotify before I recorded my own version to kind of get ideas and inspiration on how I wanted to sing it. Um, that's one of them definitely and another has to be Callan Lan because I'm Welsh and I love that hymn. <laughs> <laughs> that actually brings up an interesting point Ellen because you mentioned listening to others for inspiration. I know some people they don't want to listen to anyone when they have a new song. I tend to like it but I'm just curious like is that your normal pattern then that you'll listen to a few and then you'll just sit down and kind of come up with your own afterwards. Yeah, I mean, I'll try, um, I do like to listen to other songs. Yeah, because there might be some things which you'll you'll take an idea from or even an ornamentation yeah. you like and change it a little bit. Um, I would try and leave a little bit of time in between listening and recording your own version. So you have Got time it. to sit with all those ideas that you've kind of taken from different versions and and make it your own and then record your own. I probably wouldn't listen to a song and then record my version straight away because then you're more likely to to copy without maybe subconsciously I don't know um yeah. that's kind of how I do I would definitely listen to other people and listen to tracks you think are great definitely there's a lot to learn I think from listening to other singers okay we have a question here from Holger um apologies for my dog there he says you interpreted queens we are the champions do you plan on covering more rock anthems in the future Oh, <laughs> good question. Um, a few people have brought this up actually and said how much they love sort of soft rock and they were impressed with my rendition. Um, I think I said at some point this was kind of outside the comfort zone for me because um, so I didn't know how, how people would take it. But yeah, I'd love to. I love, especially in a live concert, the big... Um, sound system and epic sounding excited you know tracks um and orchestrations and yeah i think maybe maybe some more soft rock is the way to go <laughs> <laughs> ellen quick question for you do you have a favorite lyric from the songs like just a moment that stands out to you oh i don't know a favorite when you say that the one that jumps to mind and kind of gets me is probably abide with me and, and the lyrics abide with me at the end of every verse because recording that one um I was close to tears and actually recording you'll never walk alone the first time I did the first take of you never walk alone I was in tears at the end of recording it I think there are hymns on there which which means so much to so many people and and really touch you with the words and even the time frame and the um that kind of marching feeling you have and you'll never walk alone of just keep going and you know i don't know what the it's hard sometimes to explain a feeling isn't it so it's a feeling that i get when i hear those two hymns in particular and um they are the ones that had me yes in tears or close to <laughs> yeah well, it's a beautiful, beautiful song. Um, we had a couple, I lost the comment, but somebody was saying that they were always excited to hear your renditions of different songs because they want to hear what you'll do with it because you do something cool and new. <laughs> yeah, well, that was the hope. That was the hope, so thank you. <laughs> were there any ideas in this album that you were especially like excited once you figured out how to make that one piece and you're like, oh, no, I love that? Ooh, um trying to think I think I think it was you'll never walk alone you know because 
there's so many different ways of singing that song and so many different time frames you can choose. So you can go with um, the sort of triplety feel. Um, you know, I'm trying to think in my head. Walk on through the wind, walk on through the rain. The, the kind of triplety feeling. Or you can go with a more kind of heavier walk on through the wind walk on through the wind seeing the wrong words now because i'm concentrating <laughs> it's me, gorgeous, though. That simple time frame and that oh like emotion that that time frame brings to the song i felt was important to include and that's i think what that is the rendition they use in the original and in carousel um and i think some crossovery kind of uh, feeling has come out. Artists, sorry, I can't think. <laughs> Artists have covered it these days now with the triplet, which is lovely and it gives it a sense of forward motion. But for me, it just had more emotion in it with the kind of 4 4 tempo. Mm. And um, I hope that comes across. Well, we have another question. Uh, first, Adam says the whole album is perfect. And then we have uh, Don McCullen says, how challenging has it been with the streaming age to do music as a living? <sighs> well, <laughs> I've got to say, unless you are composing and writing and releasing your own original music, it is difficult to make a living with the streaming. Um, yeah, I think you have to for me personally, as I've not been releasing original songs very much, I'm, I'm working at the moment with um, Italian composer Marco Werber. We're actually uh, recording in, in Rome next week. And um, with him, um, he will let me write uh, the lyrics or work as a top line writer. So I will get royalties then for having composed the lyrics to his composition. Um, but often with uh, releasing, um, you know, covers say we are the champions then no there won't be many royalties from that so musicians will make a living from concerts and uh touring and i know that is something that people have been asking a lot for so i'm hoping that i can organize some concerts and touring for later in the year so i'll have more to share on that very soon well actually janny just asked that question too about um, <laughs> <laughs> so, right on the money there i am i am working on it the thing is these days as an artist, you've got to learn to do so many things and you have to be so many things at once. Not only can you sing, you also have to be sometimes your own producer. You have to be you know, adequate at social media. You have to have your website up and running and kind of be in control of that sometimes. There's, you know, video recording, sound recording, all of these elements that you also have to learn. I feel have, have been new skills for me that I've developed over the past two years since I've sort of gone into this venture of recording more and, and um, yeah, the world of classical crossover. Um, but for some reason, the skill I find hardest is organizing a tour. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm working with a company now to um, put something together for later in the year. Well, I'm sure we'll all be excited to see when that comes out. Um, being from the US, the US, I'm biased. I hope that you come down this way eventually. Oh, um, I hope so too. I know people are asking all the time in the US as well, and I would love to. We are. I'm looking further afield as well. It's not just the UK. So I'm talking about at the moment UK, a couple of US venues, and Asia. And um, I'm really, really hoping that we can pull these through now because. Um, I'd love to share these songs in concerts, in live as well. Um, not only the songs from Inspire, but also from cinema. And my next recording plan, actually, this time I'm saying, is to go back to um, the world of cinema and film. And I'm currently working Amazing. on a new collection that's going to come next, <laughs> later in the year, much later in the year, of um, kind of uh, songs from the movies. And you'd recently done, I think it was the same composer that you just mentioned, you'd, you'd done Rose's song. Um, Rose's song, yes. Can yes, you share was, a little bit on? Sorry, yes, that was with Marco Verba. Um, it was for a film I was recording the main title of, um, The Island of Forgiveness. Uh, we recorded last summer in Angel Studios in London, and um, we're working on a new film now. Um, Marco is the main composer and he's asked me to come and sing on the main title again. So that's what I'll be recording in Rome next week. A song for a Spanish thriller movie. So it's 
it's a little bit of a dark mm -hmm. one. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a working title because things can possibly change in the studio, of course. But at the moment, the song is called Masquerade. Um, and I look forward to you hearing that. <laughs> I have a question for you. Um, I think as vocalists, we kind of work in two ways. Maybe I'm oversimplifying it, but I think there's there's vocal qualities that we either have naturally and we're very drawn to uh, that we really continue to work on, or there's things that maybe we don't have and we want to have. Um, so I'm curious for you, do you have any qualities in your voice? It, it seems like it's just smooth all the way up and down, but is that something like you work on or anything else that you purposely work on or things that you want to cultivate in your own voice? I would say it's only in the, the recent, the past couple of years that I've felt comfortable in the whole range of my voice. I think, you know, the bottom is settled, the top is settled, and the middle is nice and rich now. But it takes a long time to get to that point where even you can go on stage and think my voice is always going to work, and I'm happy with that. Um, but I've also come to learn that there are um areas of my voice that yeah you like to highlight or showcase and i think that becomes apparent when you're picking keys for your songs mm -hmm. as well um i i'm told and i've believed people because i've been told by people that i trust that the kind of um lighter top sparkly end of my voice is the nice the shimmery bit that's nice to listen to so i try and and make sure that that's always there and a little bit of some warm in the bottom half as well um i don't know if i'm making any sense honestly but I <laughs> <laughs> it does to me <laughs> that makes sense. i think yeah it's definitely on my mind when i pick keys then i try and think does this show the the best you know the, the sparkliest quality to my voice um yeah it's important to think about and can I ask you, obviously, you've been doing these albums and EPs and singles, and it just seems like you're doing one after another, one after another, um, and being very prolific with that. H how How is that on you, where you've got to keep putting those things out? Like, do you really have all these things kind of in the back end, and then you start releasing them way after you've done them? Or is it really in real time that you're sharing things? Well, yes, a couple of things. Um, so I've mentioned that I've been wanting to record a version of Omnio Babino Caro for a while. Yeah. I have um, a track that's in the works for that. So that's been kind of juggled as Inspire is coming out. The idea for the next album is in the pipeline already um, and the concept. And I've come up with some track listings and some ideas um, before Inspire is out. <laughs> so yeah, I'm kind of working on a lot of things at the moment, and um, it's hard to know as well which uh, in which direction music-wise and releasing music-wise is kind of the best thing to do next as well, because there's different ideas I would love to do. I would love to do an album of, say, kind of big band songs and maybe mm. have some soft rock on there as well. I would love to do some more filmic, um, uh, yeah, filmic classical renditions as well, and... Um, you know, sleep music is is huge now as well. So, and people say all the time they're using some of my songs as lullabies, and I would also love to do more of that. So it's kind of they all are kind of going on at the same time and being juggled, um, and then it's deciding which one to release. <laughs> uh, how do you keep yourself organized, Ellen, with this many projects? Are you a list person, or how are you how are you doing this? Oh, I'm a list person. Yes, list. <laughs> if you go on the notes app on my phone. There's just notes, 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 so many lists of songs, ideas all the time as well. And and sometimes, you know, if you can't find the list, you start a new list and you end up with however many different notes for the same kind of concept. Um, I write everything down. And I'm somebody who, you know, if you can't sleep in the middle of the night and something's on your mind, I'll turn over, write it down, and then I'll be able to go back to sleep. <laughs> Let's see if there's any more questions in the chat here. Uh, we have one from Patrick and he says, uh, how does one have the privilege to collaborate with Ellen Williams? Oh, well, thank you very much. Um, it depends in which way people would like to collaborate. Um, I think if people are sending me, if, uh, if you send me a song that you'd like me to listen to, I would very happily listen to them. They can drop me an email from my website or, um, I've done some, I'm doing a collaboration at the moment actually with uh, American tenor John Ryzen. I'm sure many of you will know. Um, we're working on a duet together at the moment. So um, 
that came about because uh, I asked John to sing on my Christmas album, On the Christmas Wish, after we met through Classical Crossover magazine when you suggested we sing together. And um, I'm John has very kindly kind of returned, returned the possibility and I'm now singing on one of his songs. So um, yes, just get in, get in touch, I think, via email or, yeah, email would be the best way. Right, Patrick. So you can go to the website there. Uh, it's scrolling on the bottom, ellenwilliams.co.uk. Um, Shannon asks, Ellen, did you gain some new fans from the video last year where you were singing and didn't notice the fishermen women on the boat were applauded as you finished? She thought that was very cute. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I know which one this was. I was singing Over the Rainbow by Eva Cassidy um, by a beautiful lake area, not far from my house, actually. And Yes, at the end of the recording, I'd, I'd sang it to put on to put online. It was a kind of a New Year song for me, just to um, put something kind of hopeful out for the New Year. And I didn't realise when I came to the end that there were fishermen, um, uh, you know, fishing <laughs> at the lake, and they applauded. Um, I, I don't know, to be honest. I, I my fan base or the, the the numbers on social media has has continued to grow over the past year and I'm so grateful there are people out there listening to my music and, and want to hear it and are connecting with it because that's what it's all about so I think how that grows is um is videos like this or videos um you know that people connect with and they they share with their friends and some of my videos have had millions of views because of that so I, I'm grateful that they, there are people who want to listen. <laughs> I think I actually have a clip here. Let's see if I can do this correctly. <laughs> um, there's no sound. So if you guys want to listen to this beautiful clip, you do have to go to Ellen's YouTube channel. Um, but just to show a little bit, this was the World in Union video. Um, do you have any more videos planned, Ellen, from this album? I'm thinking about it. Um, I'm not sure. I think I've loved Be Thou My Vision so much. And I know that other people have as well. And that was one that, uh, was it nearly this time last year? It was sort of April time last year. Um, we were looking at making a video for Be Thou My Vision, but it it was so cold in the UK. I don't know if, if people <laughs> remember, there was there were kind of, I don't know, winds from the east that came in and it was absolutely freezing. And I thought, I just can't do this because we'd plans to do something like the World in Union vision, uh, World in Union vision, that makes no sense, World in Union video um, on a beach down in West Wales. Um, and it was just the cold weather kind of halted the plans a little bit. So possibly, I don't know, would people like to see a video for that one? <laughs> Let me know. <laughs> Yeah, comment below. And guys, I'm also curious, just for me, any suggestions you have for Ellen to sing? Comment below. That would be cool. Yes, as well. especially soft rock, because I would love to know what those suggestions are. <laughs> uh, one other question here from Don again. He says, what are your favorite musical styles uh, that you personally listen to? Ooh, personally, I love film music. I, I love film scores and quite often... I'll just put on a playlist of, you know, greatest hits from the movies on Spotify and listen to John Williams, Hans Zimmer, Aaron Zygman, you know, all these wonderful composers. And, and that's, that's I think, the music I connect with emotionally the most. Um, I'll put those on all the time, to be honest. When I get ready in the morning, choose my outfits, do my hair. If I'm doing some housework, if I'm doing some DIY painting, I'll have, you know, Pirates of the Caribbean full on <laughs> in the background or you know <laughs> yeah I think film music I I listen to a lot um Doug Danielson is asking how would you describe a classical voice um for instance Mary Hopkins has a clear voice but is known as a folk singer um a classical voice is uh, I guess it's it's trained in a different way to how you would hear a musical theatre voice trained or a, a folk singer, how they would sing. A classical voice, I think, has more space um, for the for the breath and the air to resonate in the in the resonating area. So you have kind of these built in like little microphones in your face here, the holes in your face, whereas if you put air through those areas, that's how the voice will project. Um, 
And I think kind of soul singers or, or folk singers will sing more from a lower area, the chest. And I, I can't comment, to be honest, because I'm not a folk singer and I've not studied <laughs> musical theatre. So I wouldn't want to say the wrong thing. But I know classically that I always try to have as much freedom, space, breath and air going through right from the diaphragm all the way you know up to up to the top of your head it feel, feels like everything is very open and the breath is very free um i don't think i could comment on on folk singing or pop or musical theaters it's not not what i do <laughs> we have another question oh first we have a resounding yes from santo in regards to the uh video he would very much like to see that Oh, video for me. brilliant. <laughs> yeah, and what, then, should I do a video for Be Thou My Vision, You'll Never Walk Alone, maybe? Um, we are the champions. I, I don't know which one. Which one should I do? <laughs> maybe we need a poll, Ellen. I, I don't know if I can do this here, but if you did on your page, oh people gosh. can vote. You can do that, Natasha. I would be incredibly impressed that you're, you know, all this technical stuff you do so easily. <laughs> Um, Holger is asking, oh, he's suggesting, he's saying Nights in White Satin would be a wonderful cover for you. That is a great song. That is a great song. I remember that song. I sang it. Um, you were speaking with Ridian, uh last week, I think, on here. And uh, my first introduction to kind of classical crossover touring was on tour with Ridian. I started as a, a backing singer for him on his UK tour of um, One Day Like This, the album. And Nights in White Satin was one of the songs that um, I loved listening to him sing. And I sang some little oohs and ahs as the backing singer. And as the tour went on, he asked me to do a support slot. So I was grateful to do um, some songs from my EP that came out at the time with Skylark. So I could do a couple of those songs as his support artist. But that is good suggestion. Yeah. <laughs> well done, Holger there. Um, so I have a couple rapid fire rounds, but in case anyone hasn't had a chance to ask a question yet, please go ahead and put it in there. We'll try to get it before we end this live stream. Um, but I've attempted to get some rapid fire questions. So let's see how we do. That. Oh, we go. <laughs> okay. So what is the number one played song on your iPad or phone right now? Um, I don't know. I don't know. As I said, I listen to playlists, so I don't know what it would be. I think top of my playlist quite a lot is probably Now We Are Free by Lisa Gerard singing, you know, <laughs> from Gladiator. So it's your your movies playlist soundtrack. Yeah, playlist. that's the one I have on the most. Okay. Um, what chore do you absolutely hate doing? <gasps> Ironing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ironing, definitely. I'll do anything else to not do the ironing. <laughs> um, another question. I feel like a lot of people, when they listen to you, they tend to compare you to whoever their favorite singer is. So which uh, vocalist do you get compared to the most? Oh, I think the comment I've seen the most recently is probably Catherine Jenkins. And mm -hmm. I am very flattered. So, yes. Catherine Jenkins. <laughs> And that makes sense. People are all putting like the Welsh singers together as well. I think so. Um, the next one we have it was what is the last movie or show you watched? Um, I was watching one on Netflix, and now I can't remember the name. Is it called um, Good Girls? I think there's uh, three three mothers who get involved with a like a mob or um, drug dealers or something. And they end up in this drug world as like mothers who are also taking their children to school. And it, and it's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty good one. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Do you use, and this is going to cause a huge bit of controversy. Is it iPhone or Android for you? iPhone. I've always <laughs> been a Mac girl as well. So iPhone and Apple, yes. <laughs> And do you edit your own videos then, uh, Ellen? Do you do some of it or all of it? Um, some of it, yeah, a lot of the time. Well, I'll do my own social, everything on social media, little snippets as I, I do. And then um, my kind of more professional looking videos have been filmed by um, a wonderful videographer called Nathan Lowe. And he's based kind of in Pembrokeshire now. Um, but we often sit and edit the videos together because I like to have an input on, on the cuts and uh, that sort of thing. 
Let's see, we have quite a few comments uh, confirming. Catherine Jenkins, they think that there's some similarity there. Oh, um, well, I'm very flattered, you know. I think people often say to me, um, yes, it's nice to be, it's nice to be compared to somebody incredible, of course, but I like to make sure that I want to be the next Ellen Williams and not the next Catherine Jenkins. So I try not to copy. I can be inspired by her, of course. I think she's brilliant and you know, an incredible businesswoman as well, not not just a singer. Um, a but I want to make sure that I am the next. Ellen Williams, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and as Don is pointing out here in the comments, also there's the, the voice type difference between you both. So you're a soprano, so your range is a bit different, I think, as yeah. well. Okay, so we do have another comment from Cynthia. And she says she's a brand new fan. She found you while arranging songs for her own album. Um, and she's, I guess, very excited about your album release. And she's recommending Vivo Perle. Oh, yes, that's a wonderful, that's a duet, I believe. So I have to think, oh, I could ask somebody to sing a duet with me. Um, yes, Cynthia dropped me a message as she wanted to buy my albums very kindly. So uh, she has her own album coming up. She's a, a harpist, I believe, in the US. So all the best with that. Have you actually, um, I'm, I'm trying to do another uh, connection right here. <laughs> have you ever heard of a singer named Chris Pinella, Ellen? No, I'm not sure. If you haven't, I'll send you his info. I, I feel like you, your voices would sound really nice together too. Oh, fantastic. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> Cynthia has one more question for you, Ellen. So she's saying she would love to know more about how you arranged the songs for the album, um, feeling mostly, or was there, there some strategy there? Oh, with the um, the arrange the track order, I, I think she means because the the arrangements are done fantastically, as I said, by Dan Lambert and Chris Greger, um, and um, I'll have a little bit of input, but really they are they are fantastic. So um, I don't have to do much there other than sing them. Um, and then so the the track order, yeah, mostly feeling. I'd say there is kind you do think a little bit of strategically because you might want to put what you think is your your best song at the beginning in case people don't listen all the way through sometimes people wouldn't listen to the end so you don't want to save your best tracks for the very end but then I think it's hard to judge what what is going to end up being your best track if your audience haven't heard them yet so I, I think I would do it mainly on feeling and on what makes sense like for me it made sense to finish with the Welsh national anthem, um, Land of My Fathers, Hain Lad Van Haddai, because that's what we do here in Wales in in so many concerts, traditional concerts or concerts with male voice choirs, you know, everybody gets up at the end to sing the anthem. So that was kind of a end of the CD and end of the evening, you know, finish with the anthem for me. So yeah, Cynthia confirmed that's what she was asking. So <laughs> well done. <laughs> So we've got over a little bit, not only about Inspire, which I hope everyone will go ahead and order um, the physical copies. Are they available? Yes, look, I have one here. They've arrived. They're here. Yay. And I've been busy signing them for everybody who asked me to sign them. I'm flattered you want me to, to write on them. So I've been doing those and um, they'll be posted out tomorrow. And um, then, as I said, I'm, I'm in Rome next week recording. So if I get if more orders come in that would like to be signed, they'll be posted the week after at this point because, because I'm abroad and I'd love to sign them for you. So yes, it's exciting to, to hold it in my hands, you know, to see something physical is quite, it's nice to see something physical. It's exciting that they're here. I hope people like them. <laughs> Do you keep like framed versions of them at home, Ellen, or? Um, I haven't yet. As as you know, I've been saying I've been renovating a house and, and doing up a, a house room by room. Um, the music room is my next project and I'd love to get things sorted in there. It would be really nice to have um, framed copies on the wall of, you know, Cinema Christmas Rush and Now Inspire just to just to remind me. So it's a nice idea. Hopefully I'll do that. So my last question for you, I guess we have some idea of what's happening musically, both with the new recordings and then hopefully to some tours. Um, but just like on a personal level, I know you've shared some things on TikTok about, you know, getting married and different things. So yeah. anything fun for you coming up personally or musically? <laughs> yes, anything fun. Well, <laughs> I'm getting married in the summer. 
Um, me and me and my partner Dan are getting married in the summer. I, I'm looking forward to it. I'm at that point in wedding planning, as I said to you earlier, where everything is just, oh my gosh, there's so many things left to do. And I think anyone who's planned a wedding goes through this. <laughs> But um, I'm sure we'll get there in the end and it's going to be a lovely day. So, so yeah, that's, that's taking a, a fair bit of time as well. And I need, well, it, to be honest, it's not. The, the music takes all my time. I need to prioritise wedding a little bit, but um, I'm stuck in on Inspire at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, everyone, thank you for tuning in. Thank you so much, Ellen. It's always a treat to chat with you. Oh, thank you again. No, really, thank you very much for talking about Inspire and sharing some clips and getting everybody here. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. And I'm going to try and figure out the poll thing on our Facebook page. So check in about five minutes. We'll see if we can get that up for the video. <laughs> um, and please go ahead, go to Ellen's website. Um, let's see if I can share this again. EllenWilliams.co.uk, where you can order the physical copies and then just stream wherever you stream the album. So thank you again so much, Ellen, and uh, come back again when you have something new, when you have your new uh, cinematic release that's coming out. It'll be great to oh, chat again. Thank you, Natasha. I appreciate the support hugely. And thank you, everybody who's been here watching. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs> Sorry, my mouse is... There we go. Bye again. <laughs>